Hey folks, man, this is Mark, and we are back with another episode of Classes of Cinematics, and I'm joined as always with my co-host, we got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo! Yeah, and this is your show about the films that shaped and warped our childhood, man, the classics, man, and uh, today is no exception, so we're going to be talking about Cobra from 1986, starring Sylvester Stallone. As far as the cast, we also got um, Bridget Nielsen, we got Brian Thompson, who plays the big bad in this, we got Randy Santoni, um, Andrew Robinson, Leah Carlington, it's also one of the bad guys, Art LaFleur. Also, this guy I've seen everywhere in, in that era, man. John Hurstfield. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Brad Bovee, uh, Marco Rodriguez. You might have recognized him as the the, the police chief in, um, in The Crow. He was giving Ernie Hudson a hard time, man. You know, Val Avery, uh, Christine Kraft, and uh, many others. You know, actually, my man, too, Roger Aaron Brown. I just noticed he was a, a cop in this as well, man. A lot of genre actors in this film, man. Yeah. A lot of these guys, you will see them in other films of the era, especially Brian Thompson, who I think really stands out as the big bad in here, man. One of my our favorite parts in the movie. Yeah. But let's talk about this plot real quick. Los Angeles policeman, Lieutenant Marion Cobra, Cabaretti, played by Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> finds himself at the center of a spate of murders carried out by a secret society called New Order Killers who select weak members of society for extermination. As the murder rate rises, Cobra takes model Ingrid, played by Bridgie uh, Nielsen, into protective custody after she witnesses New Order's leader in action. As Cobra falls for Ingrid, they find shelter in a small town but must soon fight for survival. And uh, this is put out by, uh, I think this was a Canon Film yeah, Company yep. at the time. And um, yeah, man, there's some interesting documentaries about that, that film what? company you can find that I didn't know about, but they were wilding, dude. But It was party time in the 80s, dog. Time, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the whole script of this thing definitely feels like cocaine influence, but but, yes. but we also, they were lucky to get a, um, you know, they had a string of hits with, um, with Stallone back then, dude. Uh, Including the Rambo films, I think they're responsible for, um, you know, later on Cliffhanger, um, this one, and, and and they were getting, you know, striking, um, you know, lightning was striking yeah. for them. But you know, you know in this era. they don't get complete total credit for the script, though, because this film was based off of a book called Fair Game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, can't, I can't remember the, the, the lady's name. Let me see. I, I should have it in here somewhere. Uh, nevertheless, it was, it was based off a book, um, Fair Game. And the funny thing about it is, Nine years after this one came out, they then re-released, uh, I guess, what would be another film similar to this one with Alec Baldwin and Cindy Crawford of the same title, Fair Game. But that one didn't do too well. Well, that was more based on the book. That was though. more based on the book. I remember that book. corny, like... Yeah, that, that was, it was a cheese. I was a co-star in the I, I want to say it was Alec Baldwin and... Uh, 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 Chrissy, um... Oh, that was Cindy Crawford. Cindy Crawford, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, you're not a supermodel if you don't get a movie. That's what I'm yeah. saying. I think essentially that's what's going on here, too, because Bridget Nielsen, she was kind of on fire at the time when, when she started doing this role. And I think this <laughs> Lisa, uh, I think the Beverly Hills Cop um, sequel, or maybe that was first. I, I can't remember. But also ended up marrying Stallone off of his movie. Yeah, so that's was, what I'm saying. It's crazy. It's yeah, crazy. man. And it's crazy that the character is actually is is is, 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 is imitating life. You yeah. know, because she's a model. She's a model. In the movie. Too. A model playing a model. Yeah, but, but but this is a wild film, man. Like, like I was telling Bob earlier, man. Like it, it's kind of a bad film, but it's elevated to classic status because of the craziness that they step out and, and they bring to it. There, there's a lot of things that are very memorable, but the plot and all that is yes. all paid by the numbers of the action genre, yes. man. There's not really much anything original. It's all paid by the numbers. It's pretty much he's playing Dirty Harry. Yes. In his own <laughs> cool Stallone kind of way. You know, and, but I mean, like you said, this, this film gives us everything that we would expect to see from an action film in the 80s. I mean, play by play, you know what I mean? But another thing, like to your point, what stands out to me most about this film is our big bad, our villain, mm -hmm. played by Brian Thompson. Yeah. Uh, his, he goes by the Night Slasher. Now, even though he seems to be, in essence, the leader of this cult full of serial killers um, that do this weird thing with the hammers and clink, 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 oh, clink, yeah. <laughs> clink, clink, clink. When I was, was a like, kid, that was so cool to yeah. me. But now I'm looking at it, I'm like, man, man that's so dumb yeah. to go outside. Man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fly a kite or something, but um, but they were, they, they were really meticulous with the way that they did things. And the crazy thing about it is, as the film goes on, we realize 
how deep they are and they got long reach i mean one of one of the Ooh, it, it, wow. seems, it seems like the only person in this whole like uh cult that can actually even break through to uh the night slash or even have a conversation with him or ask him to do something other than whatever it is he wants to do is the the female who in essence She's a she's a she's a, a, a cop. Was that his mom or I don't know who she was, what but the hell was she? she was the cop. Old. And for some reason, the 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 police keep putting her uh, alongside with Stallone and his partner through this whole. So in a way, case. she's kind of giving them intel, keeping them one step ahead of the police. She's keeping them in because um, essentially, like we said, man, this is a cult of Sutter killer. That that yeah. is an interesting concept to a twist. Yeah. Not like they're hunting one man. It's like thirty of these dudes, and they killing that will. It, like it, it is crazy because, like, um, it, uh, they call him the night slasher. Night slasher, and then I remember there being a night stalker yeah. in real yep. life. So, in real it's life. Kind of, so it's kind of playing on that 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 weird eighties serial killer um fear in L A. And and it's dope in a way because what's crazy about it um 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 what's his name Cobra Field figures out that it's more than one but no one's hearing him he's, he's like, saying nah, that bro, shit out the gate this ain't just one guy right. this is like a group of guys doing all this stuff and, and we see it because they do take the time to show us you know after the initial uh grocery store incident mm -hmm. which is crazy they show other kills that these guys are doing and how they stalk their victims and and it seems pretty random like like there, there are a lot of women they're going after but as the opening shots shows, it could be anything. anything. The one guy takes over the um, grocery store, and, and he's ready to kill all them. That's when we get call the cobra. Call the cobra. <laughs> yeah, call the cobra. And you know the the funny yeah. thing. The funny thing about that that was um that was the, the dude um what was it Marco Marco, uh, Mor Marco Rodriguez? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um since this film, they said that you know he's been in other films like you said the crow, but on his trailer he he gets. He has his, his own personal uh, movie trailer, and it says the disease because that's what you know, Stallone calls you. Your disease, oh, yeah, disease yeah. on the cure. Yeah. So you know, and you know, <laughs> Stallone. This this movie, I I didn't count out how many one liners they are. It's a but, lot, dude. Dude, they're not that great, though. They're not. They're not. <laughs> they're not. You know, what I'm <laughs> but but they're form fitting. You know, to the style of this film, and um, you know, the other thing about you know why the Night Slasher stood out to me so much. Is because, you know, when we see other like horror films, you know, Freddy Krueger, Jason, you know, even though they're scary and they might, you know, mm -hmm. creep us out, this dude, this was somebody you could actually come across. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe not in this form, but there mm -hmm. are people like this guy that, that hunt, stalk, maim, kill, do dismember bodies and, and they get their thrills and their jollies off of it. And also it wasn't just him, that damn knife he had. Was yeah, the, something the, out of this world. I mean, man, you got you got punch spikes all on the the punch part. The knife's about about as big as his arm. They still make those, man. And he's they, constantly they probably, sharpening. They probably, they probably sold multi millions of dollars worth of those yeah. knives, dude. Like like yeah. that was a, that, that the weapon. Like I don't know if that was made specifically for this movie or if it already. Existed. No, they made they made that one special for this movie. Well, after that, them things they, they were everywhere, there, dude. Yeah, yes. they everywhere now. Yeah, <laughs> that's like a that's that's interesting how a movie can influence you know the real life like that. Yes. Those things are. It's a standard, you know, yes. a, you know, that spike, you know, it's, yeah. it's, and, and the thing is, is like, crazy. just how like, you know, the, the Jason mask on, on, on Jason Voorhees or the Freddy claw, you mm -hmm. know, they're memorable. This knife, you know, you will relate them to the night slasher. Anyone who's seen Cobra sees that knife, like, man, that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's yeah, the knife. Like, they just think of him oh. sitting there all crazy, sharpening it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so mad for it, bro? Talk about his performance. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one of the best things about this movie. Yes, yeah, Stallone is the star, but honestly, I think um, what's his name? Brian Thompson. Uh, Brian Thompson is the star of this man. As the Absolutely. Guy, he's so weird. Like he already looks crazy. He's already yes. has an intense looking face. Yes. You've seen him in, in a lot of movies of this era. He's been in a lot of um, these Canon, Carol Cole, um, Orion pictures in, in that era. Um, mostly playing bad guys, but his face is unforgettable. And honestly, I think this is the most words he gets on on film in a lot of ways, man. I, I'm not sure if he was in um, what was that Schwarzenegger one? Um, the, oh, um, Commando. Nah, um, there was one. I think I'm not sure. I might be messing it up. There's so There's many. Some, you have to give me a hint. Was he in Last Action Hero? <laughs> he could have been. I, I gotta look that up. It's been a while since but, I've seen that. But, but he got words in this, man. Not many. He, I mean, he's still kind of playing as weird. But, but this funny. The funny. My favorite scene is when he's sharpening the knife. 
And he's just like, he slides it along slow. And it's like, yeah, dude. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> takes a breath. He's <laughs> like, dog, why are you so angry? Well, at this point, it's just so interesting scene because um, they try to take out uh, Bridget Nielsen's character. And I, I don't, I somehow heard that she escapes, man. It don't make no Everyone sense. Everyone else in the parking Every, garage got the business, but, but though. It was so funny to me because I think the guy's giving her a ride home and they get, or something. No, it was right after the model shoot. Yeah. So and, she jumps in the car by herself. I'm no, they're, they're just walking through the parking garage. Oh, yeah, garage. yeah, yeah. Because I remember yeah. this because right before, uh, or no, right after this part, we get the, the whole monologue with the, with the song. Yeah. You know, and, <laughs> oh, and, you know, real quick, you know, just a little sidebar. The music is so so eighties, uh, but but see, but, but I like that part too. I'm gonna get back. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get. Yeah, we'll but, get to that. In but but they get jumped and dude, and it's funny because like they're coming after her, and and but then the dude is like, oh, so he gets it, and then she's running through the lot, and she passes another guy, and he's just he unaware. Gets he gets it. Some <laughs> other chick gets it, <laughs> drops her bag. Yeah, how she gets she away? Escapes. Well, because he was distracted by yeah. all the other. <laughs> <laughs> but, then he, but then he's so mad that she got away. Even the the, the, the woman, she comes up, she's like. She's like, oh, oh, you know she's seen your face. She's like, she knows you. She, she got to look go. Like. She got, got to go. go. So then he's all mad. But it's so funny how he portrays that, man. Well, like, he's so, he pulls this thing together. Like I said, this film is so basic. Yes. It, but, but those moments are what elevate it to the but, top that make it enjoyable. Like, you know, the, you're like, yo, this is. The funny thing about <laughs> how standout Brian Thompson's performance was in this, they said that he had to audition for this role seven times because <laughs> Stallone. And the director, I want to say, is um, they uh, Cabretti. They said that he came off; he was too nice. Oh, <laughs> and then, but then once they saw him on film, they were like, "Oh, he's yeah. a shoe." And I was like, "Dude, did, what? Yeah, this dude looks like he looks like he don't got a nice bone in his it's body." Acting. You can't base it off how someone's yes. normal demeanor is. People, you yes. turn, if you're a real actor, you can turn That's that into that thing on. And then he, yo, he was convinced. He kills it, and then you know it's funny because, yeah, you know, like I said, then we get the. Like I said, we we get that awesome ass music. We get that that montage where it's like you know, uh, what did Angel in the Sea? You know what though? I really did like that part because what was dope? It, it bit, like you got two things going on. You got her in the modeling shoot, but then you got uh, Cobra going Stone, through the streets looking for information. But then you got him still, you know, sharpening his knife and stalking. But, but it's dope. I like the Stallone part because it gives us a glimpse of what those streets were like um you know at that time it's la mm -hmm. but, but he's he's also going through the underground and you see some of the stuff like like you know he's talking to the to the uh to the um goes to the tattoo shop or where, where cause yeah cause they all got, got the the skull with the with the, the yeah it's just cool man he's bumping into these little he's going to a nightclub he's going to, yep. talking to bouncers man he's talking to all these different people in the streets and it's also give you a glimpse of the streets at that time yes. it's probably pretty scary with these guys coming out jumping people in gangs to, to kill people man I, I can't imagine man like like um it's interesting um you know a few weeks ago i was watching you know one of these id channel things and mm -hmm. i forgot about this guy called the um the um the freeway um uh, killer or the freeway something killer. yeah it was um i forgot what the exact name was i may be messing up but it was a dc thing dude yeah in, in the 70s man and i hit my mom up i was like yo do you remember this guy that, and she was the freeway she was like yeah i remember that dude i was a little girl i was like i was like they was like yeah we were scared of shit and i just and it puts you in the mind of you know what's the people felt at that time the citizenry that you're just yeah. living your life but you know that you could be the victim of one of these killers at any moment, man. Well, oh, yeah. Once they put the target on your back, I mean, and like you said, like, I mean, once, once, you know, Bridget got away, like that was just the beginning of her problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, this dude was never going to stop. And I can't, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't help but to laugh at the part where, you know, when, when the chick does come behind him, it's like, yeah, you know, you, you saw, she saw your face. You got to kill him. And he's like dying his hair black and planning on infiltrating the hospital. Like, like dyeing your hair is gonna make nobody recognize your face. Well, like, they don't. I don't know, but, man. It's but most really, of them didn't really see but, the but face. The thing too, though, there, there's multiple killers, so, so maybe you do have. But he was like the one. But but can so. you connect him to the other ones? Because there's times too where other guys are coming after, um, you know, uh, Bridget Nielsen's character, but they're not exactly him. They're yeah, but there. see, when, but when they talk you know? about the night slasher, they they refer to like the the long slash marks and the deep puncture wounds mm -hmm. from that knife that he uses. But, you know, nevertheless, you know. But, but the description says, oh, it could be anything. Sometimes a uh, uh, claw hammer or like, like you know, because you know, you got various people. But they still think they're looking for one guy. Yeah, so only, yeah, only one. That's yeah. like, man, it's more of them. It's a game. Like, no, no, it's, no, it's, it's a game. Yeah. And you know what?
just to, just to, to switch the tone, we can't talk about this movie without talking about Stallone's badass car in this. Yeah. It, 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 now, and this is where, you know, I had to do some extra research. What kind of car was that, dude? That definitely, they're, they're I calling like, it. I feel like the Cholos has some work. They're, they're calling it a 1950 Mercury Custom, right? But the Mercury Custom actually didn't come out until 1952. It had a 1952 well, to 1956. Well, Custom he had some work done on no, it. No, no, that is the that is what the car was called. It is a Mercury Custom. It looks that's like yeah, a, but but that's but, yeah. but slightly changed. Yeah, so they so they said that his is a is a 1950 Mercury Custom. But then when I was looking uh, on the Mercury website, they said that they actually made those cars from 1952 to 1956. <laughs> this is a stock right here. Like, like, look at this. this that's yeah. probably the stock right there. Um, so, but but look at how his looks. So it's funny because his car comes up. But see, look, this looks like a family car. Look at that. Yeah, all that looks normal. But yeah. look how his does. But his, yeah, his. It's got all the extra stuff. It looks like it's it, it, that car is built for fighting crime and yeah. killing the night slap. But I didn't know how. I thought his thing was. A, I didn't like, realize you know, how close the, the original custom. model was to, yeah. to his customized and it's car. and it's cool too because like crazy. I said that's actually his car so it says he owns that Mercury Club Coupe Three that's 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 what the uh, was called Mercury Club Coupe the original one the original very original yeah, yeah paid off of that his, his yeah his, it's, his it's, the, it's the Mercury Custom yeah. but um but yeah man that's actually his car he owns it and it's funny because um. You know, with with this car being the, the car is a standout in this film. Everybody knows the Cobra car. You've seen the film, you know the car. Um, but then we get that badass car chase scene. Yeah, which, that's prerequisite that's, for that's, action movie in the eighties. You know what I'm saying? Chase. And you know, and it was funny because you know when I started watching my rewatch, I had already known that this was Stallone's car, and I was like, "Yo, I can't believe that he would do that." You know? Um, oh, this part, but, but, but no, the car after the movie. No, 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 no. That, that oh, was his it, car. <laughs> and what they did is they <laughs> built. So you said it was they, before they even made. Yeah, the when movie, he first was like, up, that was his car. Wow. He owned it. And so wow. what they did is they built a dummy car. For the car chase scene, yeah, yeah. and if you notice during the car chase scene, there's no headlights in it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So there's there's little things that you can you like, gonna break like oh way. shit. Well, I mean because the car just gets demolished. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean it gets flipped, rolled over, it jumps over some boxes. It does. It jumps off of the damn second floor of the the parking garage. But it, it is a really great car chase though. Like, it's great like that man. Like the that was in that Joe. Like man, with that part where he's going straight, then he hits that thing in reverse, pulls out his police edition Uzi. And start shooting. <laughs> There's no police station Uzi, man. This, these dudes. <laughs> That's where this thing is stupid to me, because he's like the he's the most like 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 I can't get this, I can't get jiggy with this man. He's, he's like the most freest police officer oh my God. in it. Like he could do what he oh, wants. Man, the only thing missing on his on his police uniform is a cape, dog. <laughs> there, there's never been a guy like this ever in, ever. in, 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 ever. in the history of police law enforcement, man. You ever. just can't be this guy. Like even the way they call him in, it, it's like when um this my heartbreak rays call the Swede. Yeah, like, hey, call the Cobra, <laughs> and then you find out like it's like my man's name is Marion Cobretti. And then he finds a way to get a cool ass name out of that. And then, and then, and then he's so cool that he gets everyone to start calling him that. He's so cool. He has a cobra on his gun handle. A cobra on his on his customized <laughs> forty five that shoots nine millimeters. It's a, it is a it is a Colt nineteen eleven that only though that model gun is a forty five caliber. <laughs> But his was made custom for him for this movie to shoot nine millimeters. Isn't that crazy? Is insane. And he keeps his gun cleaning uh, materials in the egg carton. In the egg carton. <laughs> in the freezer next to the the one single pizza slice that he only chops a corner off of with scissors. It's like, dude, dude I, yeah, I know about nut, cold pizza, but he's frozen nut, pizza, dog? He's a nut. Like, he's a but then has the mind to tell everybody else about their eating habits. Like, he gets, oh he gets that on his partner for eating too much sweets. And then he tells Bridget, the one time, like, here's a yo. You want a life preserver for PJ, your for your French fry? It's drowning in the ketchup. <laughs> oh, no, no, that that, that that did annoy me, dog. She was squeezing the hell out of that ketchup, and look, the amount that she was squeezing versus the amount that was actually on the it was something something disappeared right there. Something went, went no, right. There. I mean, like, but, I was like, you know, no. how people eat their food. I mean, she it wasn't like she was like, hey, you want one of my oversaturated but ketchup? But some of that ketchup disappeared because the amount she was squeezing, it was she was squeezing <laughs> on that joint for like two she minutes. Liked the sound, but, right? but then. <laughs> But when they showed the actual fries, it was just like a medium amount of ketchup on them. But like then, was, but then that's why she double squirted at the end, like she starts squirting some more. 
Oh my, I hated that. I was like, no, nah, man. And it's it's funny because it, like because th- this movie it, it tried to take such a serious approach. It was mm-hmm. so over the top, but then it had just so much like like cheese, mm-hmm. you know, thrown into it too. Yeah. But I think that it just it, it helped for uh, for Stallone's character. You know what I'm saying? It, it it made him a little more like relatable in in the realm of like. I mean, this is the one you do for the money. Like, it's not really uh, you know, like it's not you're not gonna get no awards well, well, for this. You yeah. don't get paid, bro. But, but see, like, it's the payday. That's like, the I'm, thing. I'm big now. I can get the people in seats. That, and yes. you can build a film around me, even though it's ridiculous, but but I can sell it because I'm the star. It's like Rock doing skyscraper, man. Come yeah, on, man. Well, you know, I mean, I don't see this dude, and that's the thing. They said <laughs> that even though on credits it says George P. Uh, Cosmatos is the director, Stallone was calling the shots. They mm-hmm. said he literally he was the director behind the scene. But because I think he, man was probably coked out. Because I think well, he also <laughs> knew that this movie might not hit, so he didn't want to put his name on. He did this dude. He was his scapegoat. Yeah. But then they also That's said, they that said, sense, yes. And they also said that Stallone was Don Diva on the set, dog. No one could even talk to him. Don't look at me. <laughs> Don't look at me. It was like, why, why, why are you chewing too loud? Looking at me. Don't look at me. No one could talk to him. Um, when he was on set, wow. you know, everyone had to be a particular way. And then they said when he wasn't on set, that this other guy, this, this Cosmatos, the, the, the unofficial or the official mm-hmm. director, um, was a complete ass to everyone, especially Brian Thompson. Like wow. he was telling Brian Thompson that he would have got a better performance, you know, out of him if this, that, X, Y, Z. But then whenever Stallone was around, he was like super nice to him. Was like, hey, what, what kind of stuff is that? But like, what was really going on on there? And then, you know, speaking of the cheat factor, I was just reading the cliff note and they said that, guess what the original name was when they first started this? Guess what the original name was? What was it? <laughs> Torn on the Cobra. Oh my God. No, they weren't going to look. That's probably like a cold name. That's probably like a cold name. It's, you know? It says the original edit had a working title of yeah. Torn on the Cobra yeah. as the cult, yeah. as the, as the cult first start, targeted the North America ag- agricultural in- industry before moving on to uh, vulnerable women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think probably, that was probably just a cold name that they had for, you know, in the back. Well, as a working, yeah. Like I said, the working title. But, but, uh, but I also want to tell you, man, if you want to know about the filmmaking in this era, check out this documentary called Electric Boogaloo, The Wild Untold Story of Ten Films. And it came out in um, 2014, but it goes into the details of the producers behind films such as this, man. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they basically... They sunk themselves because they never said no. And the thing about it is, like, every now and then they would get a hit like this. Or, like I said, Cliffhanger. Or, um, you know, even, you know, the Rambo series. And those films were carrying the whole thing. And then they had, like, a string of crap that they were putting out that that that, 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 they, that these other blockbusters they had had to absorb the cost of, man. You know? And they eventually, they just ran out of money. And they just, you know, they like at one point they had... So much stuff in production, man, and a lot of it didn't get finished, or if it did get finished, it was just came out very poorly, it, it rated poorly, it performed poorly at the box office, people weren't even renting them, you know what I'm saying? Yes, so, <laughs> not for nothing. They basically killed themselves, dude. Even though this film is quote-unquote considered a cinematic disappointment, man, it grossed over 12 mil, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, in the 80s, that was one of the largest openings worldwide. For a film in the eighties, and the only it says the only other films that beat it on opening weekend were um, Star Trek Four, The Voyage Home, mm-hmm. and The Poltergeist Two, the other uh, the other side. Um, and this was eighty six. This right? was eighty six. Oh uh, dang, they did spend a lot on it though. It spent twenty five million on the at the box office. Um, I mean, would you say it grossed at the um, theater twelve million? I want to say yeah, twelve million. And then the canon, it also earned over one hundred and sixty million worldwide. Against a budget of twenty five million, yeah, that's great. And also, so they they tripled up, bro. Video rentals too. Yes. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I mean, and the, the large cult following that that this yeah. film still has. I mean, I think I, I saw this originally. This is an HBO view for me. Like you know, yeah, I, was, it, I was a little dude. It premiered on HBO and watched it, and I was you know, it was it was dope at the time. You know, with a kid not yes. knowing shit around the world. About the world, it worked, you know. But now, in hindsight, I'm like, bro, this is wild. It's one of them wild ones. Like, like I get, I can enjoy it for what it is, you know. Mostly, a lot of that is me making fun of it and having yes. a blast at how ridiculous. Because I still don't understand how you get a cop, 
people to operate like this guy. <laughs> like, like he nope. don't answer to nobody. And look, and peep this, right? So, so, <laughs> so, Marion Cobretti is is chasing a stalker who's killing and maiming people. When we do the body count on this film, there are fifty two deaths. Forty one of them it's from him are from Cobra. <laughs> So who's the real killer here? Oh, it's, it's Come on. Like, like, it's you see what I'm saying? I think by the time he gets the case, they're, they're up to like 16 bodies from the killers. Yeah. Which, well, which, and he got the rest. <laughs> he got the rest with his police edition Uwap. Because I'm all about He was spraying that thing. Everybody was, was, was getting that. Um, but another thing I do like is just the simplicity of it. Like, when you when you take it down to, to simplest form, this film is just, I mean, it is a, it is a, you know, a basic model of, of an action film from the 80s. But when you look at the costume designs, I mean, Cobra, you've got the little boots, mm -hmm. the, the jacket, sunglasses. For some reason, he likes to chew on matchsticks. Cool. But don't smoke cigarettes, yeah, don't smoke though. Sticks, yeah. Don't smoke cigarettes or yeah, chew on a matchstick. That's your thing. But what I did like also is is the look of, you know, the the, the killer cult. I mean, they're, they're even more simpler. I mean, because... All they're doing is putting a pantyhose over their face with yeah. eye holes in it. Did but he invent that though? Was that? I think I he think might have. That I think he did. People use that now, dude. Yes. Like that's another thing and, that came out of this. And it is crazy to me how they invented that, man. How something wrong. so simple can alter the structure of your face. He does not look the same with no, that pantyhose. Well, maybe they got it from something Nelson, but, but I didn't see that. I never saw it in a movie until I saw this. And, and then that, that became a thing that people were real life. Super that creepy. That thing, dude. I, I think I saw, I was watching a, as recently as maybe 2000 something, uh, uh, the Action Bronson video, and, and him and Mayhem Loren got the same job. Yeah. They just pulled this shit out and you just, yeah. wow. I mean, and just, just think, I mean, just think of it like, uh, you know, those that, you know, are, you know, living in, in their lifestyles, doing those kind of things, how simple it was back then to just buy a pack of pantyhose or something. I mean, ain't nobody thinking nothing of it. They don't, they don't think you're going to turn around and, and make that into a, a, a I'm going to kill you mask. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I love the simplicity of it. You know, love the soundtrack. Love, the, you know, as overboard as it is. The one-liners they they make me laugh. Like I wish I wish I, I wish Stallone would have made an album with all these one-liners. Just put put some of them things behind it. <laughs> no, no. That was it. Your disease and the cure. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's another thing I want to point out. Like this film starts off with him doing a voiceover. It's like yeah, there is four hundred bank robberies. Yeah, every day. Yeah, two hundred rapes per hour. I don't know. I'm yeah. making up the numbers. A violent crime every twenty five <laughs> seconds. A murder every twenty four minutes. And two hundred fifty rapes a day. He's like, bro, and he, he's, he's like, doing this thing with his voice. Like he sounds like real Batman. S yeah, yeah, man. You know, you're to scare me already. Like, yeah, kind of weird. I, I don't know if those are were factual stats of the time. And then, and then the whole time, honestly, he, they might be man. The eighties was crazy. Yeah, like, and the, the, the whole time we're getting these these factoids, man. We're just getting this like revolving camera angle of this cool fire. ass gun. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, <laughs> oh, wow. it was a violent era, man. But but, but I love how the, also the era, like like it, it's kind of propaganda, but the era, like, like even. When you go into like things such as uh, Death Wish Two and Three and where yeah. it's just starting looking like like I don't know what's really like the, even the bad guys feel a little cartoonish yes. like like they're beefing up a propaganda machine trying to um pass the crown bill. These are, yeah, these are like, carbon please. copy bad guys, dude. Yes. <laughs> Think about if you're someone in Iowa that don't never see no crime and you're looking at this depiction of L.A., you're probably like, yo, I am never going there. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. You go lucky doors that night. Like, All you gotta do is watch this and then watch Commando, and you're like, no, fuck that. I'm staying in the house yeah. for the rest of my life. But, but I, think this, <laughs> I think this one hits a little harder because oh, the, the enemies of Commando was like, it, it was so far removed from us. There are army guys, the military coming after this. Ex I mean, it was like, an like, island full of bad guys. But, but this, like, <laughs> these guys are doing crimes in the streets, like things that people are reading about at the time. Like I said, this is like the. There's a couple of really high profile serial killers that were doing these at this yes, time yes, for yes. a little bit before when this film came out. And that's man. why it was scary. And mm -hmm. the other the other scary part about it, like I said before, 
they had a cop on their team. So, you know what I'm saying? If, if, if they get your license plate, you're short. You know what I'm saying? She's going in there using the police system and then mm -hmm. shooting them the info. Yeah. I think you got away. Then you wake up, man. Yeah, there was a couple of things. I, I was like, I already finding them so fast. But then, because the intel. But then yeah. it's also, I was still right there all the time. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I, like, I want to believe he, he, he had the wear for all, but I want to believe he's good at policing, but but no one's that good. No, no, like, you know, he's like, this is the hospital, and then he's there, he's already there, yeah. like rumbling but, with but, him. But, <laughs> but yeah, and then they were already at his house. He was like, I was like, what the hell? You know what I'm wow. saying? Yeah. Yeah. But well, you know, she, she probably gave him she the, gave the address on his house. Yeah. But you know, in the thing about this, what, what a lot of people don't know, there is an actual like uh, uh, oh, another man, cut. Man. That's it's another forty minutes worth of cobra action um that they you know they had to chop this one down because if they would have gave us the original scene there is that you can find copies of it it's real grainy um 80s quality film but they said that if they would have oh, kept the longer cut of the movie? longer cut 40 minutes they, worth. is that included in like the dvd or anything um or? I, I don't i don't know where you find it at they didn't do it, no what, no what, they had to chop was, this out what was it, more 40 minutes of what more um, killings more you, you got more of of the hospital scenes it actually showed him brutally murder the nurse and the janitor um, I think there was one more death in the um, in the in the garage scene, and then a couple more. It was just like more more telling. Um, but the thing about it is, Maybe the sensors got if they wanted to like, shave uh, off that forty minutes, dude, this film would have been rated X. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably one of the things. So because because in that era, I think the sensors were a little bit more aggressive. Like like even things that I see now, like like um, like you know what got me? Um, this is a um, you know, thermometer checking the temperature moment. When Walking Dead premiered on AMC, and I saw what they were doing on there, yep. like at nine PM on a on a on a on a Wednesday or on a, on a Sunday night, night yes. like, I'm like, no, I, I guess I'll get away. But 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 yeah. but put it this way, um, by what you said, Walking Dead would have been rated X if it came yeah, out. Man, you know, I mean, dude, you got to rate it already. I think like they they would even rank it off like the amount of curse words. I think they said that if you use more <laughs> than one f bomb or more than two f bombs, it's rated R regardless. Mm -hmm. Um. You could use like shit or the B word a couple I think, times. I think now you can get one non sexual F word and you'll yeah. still get PG 13. Yeah. Uh, but but that's, you know. Yeah. Well, then if there was like any kind of skin, you know what I'm saying? You, you know, if, if you got. If, no, I don't know, dude. But then I remember, it, yeah, it could, I remember HBO middle of the day seeing a movie that was PG 13 with, 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 with nudity. With, yeah, Nick, no, Nick, like, Nick, like, like. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, so I, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. So, so you can show me some boobies, but you, I can't say the I can't say the F bomb. Well, here's the thing, though: those boobies won't pass now at PG-13. Exactly. Like that, that, but but in that day, it was it was passing. It's weird. It's almost like it did a flip flop. It, you know? it did. Like, it like, did. Like, but what was? But you know? it, that, that's an understandable flop. You know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Man. I don't know. I, I mean, don't I, I, I don't know the rules. I, was, I don't I, either. I was looking at them PG-13. Yeah, man. man. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Because I, I mean, we we have brought up it. some films that you know in previous shows where they're like we're surprised to say, hey, man, this is rated PG-13, yeah. but like by today's standard, it would definitely be rated R or vice versa. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. So that yeah, that that's really trippy as well, man. But you know, overall, man, I think uh, like it's I said, an entertaining, it's, rock, man. It, 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 like like I said, man, even the flaws are entertaining. Thanks. You know that, that, that I can't describe it any, any other way, man. Like like. A, there are there are some hardcore purists when you watch movies and and these things will annoy the hell out of you and you can't hey, have no enjoyment like like even I came out the movie theater um yesterday and I had a good time but but then I heard two um women they were walking out of the same movie and they were like oh it was too um it was too self aware and I was like man I love that shit that's have me cracking up and I'm just like it all's going to depend on what kind of viewer you are and, and I'm a viewer that loves ridiculousness at times like like even. The parts of this movie that don't make sense, that aren't, they're, they're entertaining to me because it's, I know whatever this film was made, like, like they, they tried to do the best job they could, but, but it's clearly a script that didn't care about keeping it, everything real and historically accurate and, and, you know, and, and, and operating in this world of realism. They, they were entertainment first. Yes. And, and the thing about this film <laughs> is you can still watch it in today's time 
knowing that you're watching a film that took place in the 80s and still enjoy it today. Like mm -hmm. now, the, the the rewatchability, I mean, I think that, that, you know, you watch it, if you ain't say you ain't seen it in 15 years, you watch it again, you can wait another 15 years before you go on your next <laughs> Cobra Bender. You but, file. You know, you but, file. but it's cool because, I mean, it's you know? it's clocking in at, what, about 86 minutes? Yeah. It's, so it's a short run time. It plays super fast. I mean, they, you, you barely had time to breathe. There's so much going on constantly if you're not dealing with Cobra and his stuff, then you got the, the cult in there stuff oh, and then a like little bit of sprinkle of what's going on with, with, with Bridget the model and stuff mm -hmm. but um as far as you know the, the people that want to run through a film like this or even new films with a fine tooth comb it's just a lot of a lot of folks just want to have something to complain about mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying yeah. You're, like like say you, lot of, take a step back crazy. find a way to it's enjoy the little things these days, like negative um, impressions get more attention than yeah. the positive ones. Because right? you know, they, everyone they, wants to have something to write about. So some of these things, like like glam on and, and and come out like that. Like even recently, we just saw the Nope film, and, and I'm looking online, and I'm saying, "Oh, this is Jordan Peele's worst." And I'm like, "I don't know what you was, what you saw." But, exactly. Because hey. <laughs> you trying to put him in a box, and you had yeah. that he he did mm -hmm. something that he wanted to do that you know that just took him out of the category in the bracket that, you know, the world mm -hmm. tried to put him in. So no, that yeah, no, man. you know, but then again, like you said, you know, when, when people come with, with the negative comments and the negative energy, it creates conversation and, you know, yeah. all they really want to do is just get their thread rolling on their little uh, social mm -hmm. platform and stuff. And then, you know, oh, I had 18,000 people yeah, comment on my negative action. don't even be on social media. Yeah. You can see the... To fix this in. Then that's part of the reason why I don't be on there. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't got time for that. Miss me with all that shit. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that's it, man. This is, we, we, I think we can wrap this up, man. This is Big Cobra from 1986, <laughs> man. Check it out. If you haven't seen it, it's worth your time, man. It like, is. It's, it's, nothing, it's not going to be nothing historically breaking the mold, but, but it's got enough going for it that it make it an entertaining romp, man. Yes. You know? It is and, it is thoroughly enjoy, enjoyable. Like I said, it does carry a certain level of rewatchability. Um, it is it's got its cheese, but I mean, if you love '80s films, you love vintage cop films. This this is one that will you know it you will find enjoyment in this as well. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah, that's it, folks. Uh, we'll go back to up, man. Make sure you follow us on Instagram uh, at Classics of Cinematics. You can follow me, Monk at Monkey Blood on Twitter and Instagram. Oh, this is Bobby Blockbuster. You can catch me at Bobby Blockbuster 118 on the gram. Yeah. All right, folks, we out of here. <laughs>